and remind me when I'm not smiling because you know I want to play the first goal. Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about the Michigan Manicures Test uh, and Test Taker Guide. I'm also going to demonstrate a practical. Um, I have sent five students to State Board doing it this new way and have been successful. So we're going to talk about some of the differences between how we used to do it, what are some of the changes, and how we have chosen here at our school to train our students to do it. So um, first off, if you go through the Michigan Manicures Test Taker Guide, it can be printed off at the PSI website. Um, educators will know this, obviously. Um, starting on page 10, I just wanted to talk about some of the important guidelines that you have to follow. So the first one being test takers are required to bring to the test two containers to dispose of used items. So at one time we had one trash bag or one bin. Um, now we have two and I will show you what those look like and how we've chosen to label those. Another issue is chemical products that are required to be listed on SDS sheets in an actual business are required to be used from the original container. We used to be, or they used to want us to label over original labels. Now they don't. They want the original label, and you don't have you, you know, they don't want you labeling over the original label. So that is something that's different for us in our packing. Um, the number one safety rule in our industry is following instructions. There is no necessary or required style or technique a school needs to teach or a test taker needs to perform. All topic areas are observed in the manner a manicurist would normally complete a task. Tasks should be taken seriously and performed as displayed, um, sorry, performed as instructed in the test and to the highest skill level they are capable. Scores are based on the test taker displaying a solid knowledge of workplace infection control and safety precautions. So in other words, the you're primarily being graded on um, infection control and safety precautions. They no longer care how perfect your work is. Obviously, my students are doing all of the steps pretty much the same way. We have taken out the nail wrap service because that's no longer required. Um, and one of the only differences is, is I had them take the finger bath and the finger bath solution out of the manicure due to having a little less time to perform the service. And also in our industry with cuticle removers and how they have progressed, we no longer have to use a water bath and we prefer not to because allowing the nail plate to absorb water means, you know, uh, not as longevity of a service. So we've opted to take that out and you can't be scored less for not doing that step. So that's what we've chosen to do. Um, workplace infection control precautions. This is on page 10 of the test taker guide. Some things I'd like to point out, clean hands before starting a service. They have implemented 10 minutes at the beginning of every single service or setup. And I was like, what do we need all this time for? That's ridiculous. Um, Cause PSI is about simplicity. Testing is about simplicity, keeping things very simple. They physically want to see you wash and sanitize your hands at the beginning of every setup of every service. So we are going to wash our hands like 500 times, not really, but at least five. Um, so with that being said, I just wanna bring that to everyone's attention. Knowledge of single use and multi-use items and how to dispose them properly. We have two bins now. Um, trash has to go in single use and items and implements have to go in multi-use. You cannot throw the wrong thing away in the wrong bin or you will lose points for um, workplace precaution and, and whatnot for that. So make sure you're discarding into the correct bin. Um, just for an example, you cannot take any implements out of barbicide, dry them off with paper towel and leave the paper towel wrapped around them and put them in your implement bin. Um, you have to discard the paper towel into the trash and you have to put the implement in the, in, into the multi-use bin. Uh, Returning items to the kit. You cannot take items out of your kit and put them back in your bag. So whatever kit you're choosing to bring in um, and work out of, you cannot, once you take items out of that uh, kit, you cannot put them back in. 
We have chosen a duffel bag. This is just a simple black gym bag from Amazon. It has no logos or labels on it. Um, I don't allow my students, they don't want any sort of school branding um, at State Board. I recommend not having school branding at State Board. I just ask them to dress simply in black, professionally, and comfortably, and you know, take their bag. So this is what we are packing in today. Um, I will go through my bag and show you how I have packed kind of quick. I'm not going to list all the items that I've used, but we can put that in the description if necessary. Um, knowing how to use and dispense products without contamination, this is just a reminder, all rules are the same. We don't touch bottles to the skin, we don't leave bottles open, we don't cross contaminate. Um, the biggest thing they're looking for is whether you're keeping yourself and your client, the public safe, that's it. So. Um, we still want you to do a good job on the services, obviously, I expect you to, but um, we want to make sure you're not leaving bottles open, dropping things on the floor, not picking them up, touching your face and not sanitizing your hands, you can't touch your body um, without sanitizing and moving forward. Uh, I tell my students I prefer them to keep their hair up and out of their face. You can pull it back. Today you clearly see that I have my hair up, um, the back half is down but it's not hanging in my face where I'm not feeling like I have to brush it or touch my face for any reason. Um, on page 11, I believe, it just says if body fluid become present during the service, how to deal with it properly. I will show you my blood spill kit. Um, I don't, we don't take our blood spill kit out, but it is required that you have one. We keep it in our duffel bag. It is in a Ziploc bag labeled blood spill kit and it has necessary items for a blood spill. We have a biohazard um, bag for blood, for disposal of bloody items if necessary, and band-aids and uh, antiseptic wipes, neosporin or um, things along those lines so that you have. And then of course you always have your hospital grade EPA on your desk at all times. So that's, that's for bloodborne pathogens. Uh, work safety, um, workplace safety precautions. Uh, it says, one thing I'd like to point out on here, chemical mixing procedures, storage of chemicals, and SDS sheets. I have been told by a representative of PSI that PS, or, uh, SDS sheets are not required in your kit. Because it says this, we are opting to give our students a staple packet of SDS sheets of all the chemicals that they take to stay for. We're told that that it's not required. However, we would rather be safe than sorry. Um, so if they're asked for it, they have it. Kit supplies and equipment. The one thing I would like to point out is that it says there are no right or wrong supplies or is um, there a right or wrong way to demonstrate the topic area. This is again, why we pulled out the manicure bath um, and finger bath solution. Uh, it's not going to be held against us. I don't think it's necessary. So we decided to simplify the manicure. A little bit further down, it says that this is the uh, PSI National Manicure and Practical Test Rating Criteria, total number of 48 points. That is incorrect. It is only 42 points, and PSI has yet to update this information online. The last I checked was probably four days ago. Um, and what is today? March 16th? Yeah. So. Um, as of March 16th, uh, as far as I know, it still says 48 points. It is 42 points. Um, if you look at the, the uh, grading criteria, topic area three, nail tip application, it goes uh, one through six points, seven through nine points, and then skips 16 to 18 points. So that is incorrectly typed and they need to fix that. It should be 12 points, not 18 points. I think that's all I have to cover as far as the manicuring uh, test taker guide. If you guys can look through this on your own time. I am going to go through my kit briefly and show you some of the things that we have done. Some of the changes that we have done uh, as far as the new testing goes. And if you're not from Michigan, uh, I know there are multiple other states that have joined Michigan's testing and there are, there are multiple other states that are testing this exact same way. There should be a list on the PSI website, so if you are from another state, it might be similar. 
you might just have to double check your laws and make sure they're not any different. So for our, our two bins, we have single use and multi-use. We have chosen paper bags. Gift bags work really well um, also. So I have chosen to make my single use trash a little bit bigger than my multi-use for the reason that it's easier to set items in this without brushing the side walls of the bin so I don't have to sanitize my hands as much if I, if I bump it. Um, and uh, the gift bags stand up really well. So you can either use paper bags and cut them to size. We lined ours with clear trash bags. You wanna make sure that your labels are very clear. Some people like to label all four sides of, of the bag. Um, I just say when you set up, make sure that the proctor is able to see the labels clearly. Okay, so that's one difference. We will have two trashes. This is our copy of our SDS sheets in uh, our state board bag. As you can clearly see, there are quite a bit. So if you choose to supply your students with these, you can look those up for the chemicals that you have. We have a blood spill kit that is labeled blood spill. Um, some of my students, we have a biohazard bag in here for blood and other items. Um, my students have gone to the dollar store or you know the grocery store, Walmart, Meyer, and bought a little um, first aid kit that had everything that they needed for the most part. We give them the biohazard bags because we order those in bulk and label the plastic bag and they just kind of slip everything in there and keep it in their duffel bag. If they're asked for it, they have it. Now, any chemicals that uh, are required to have an SDS sheet have to have original labels. Now, we know that we use barbicide, hospital grade EPA disinfectant, um, and obviously we have these in a 32 ounce bottle uh, heavy duty so they don't leak or they don't break on you and then the labels are from the website so we scan them to size and tape them on with packing tape all of our labels are covered with packing tape to protect them so that they can get practices multiple times over without these items being ruined um, this has worked out really well we do have a wet sanitizer jar labeled wet sanitizer barbicide and we will pour the barbicide from this bottle into that wet sanitizer jar, which is what PSI actually asked of us when I did speak with one of the representatives. They said they would prefer to see it this way, so that's what we did. So this is something that's a little bit different. Our service bags look the same. We have relabeled them to according to the new service names, but they're the same way we used to pack. Um, you'll see me pull these out and I haven't changed anything except for removing the finger back. So these are my tip, my sculpture nail service, and my manicure service are all in here. As far as my manicure hand goes, we have pre-prepped her. Um, students go in with one finger polished always. These three fingers we have um, set up for the manicure. They're a little bit longer. We have also top coated the acrylic with a no white um, gel polished top coat. So it's very easy to get the polish on and off of these nails. It, uh, it doesn't soak into the acrylic. It makes it really easy. So I would recommend top coating your manicure fingers with some sort of gel top coat. The ring finger and the pinky finger are what we are using for tip blend and sculpture nail service. These are prepped with an acrylic base, but of course they're very short. So we will be extending these two fingers for the um, exam today. So with that being said, um, I think we're gonna get into starting the demonstration of this exam. I'm gonna tuck everything back in here so you can watch me do everything from beginning to end. I do tend to put my blood spill kit and my um, SDS sheets in the bottom of my bag. Do not take your test taker guide and have that in your kit, okay? That, I would think they could assume you're cheating. Remember, your eyes can never wander at state board. You can be accused of cheating. So you just wanna make sure you keep your eyes on your own station or your own table at all times. And uh, don't take your test taker guide in your kit with you for any reason. <clears throat> I will be putting my trash bags on the top of my duffel bag because it's the very first thing that I remove from my kit or it's how I train my students um, to remove items from their kit. So whatever we need first tends to be towards the top. We do not want to um, put dirty items on our station ever. 
So when we first begin to set up, you're going to see me cover part of my table with paper towel. That's because I need to set some items on this table before it's been um, disinfected. And you'll see how I handle that so that I'm not contaminating the items that I take out to, you know, take out of my bag prior to sanitizing my table. So today, one of my students, Polly, is going to prompt me through um, the tasks and time limits. And we're going to move on with actually showing you how we would go about um, rolling out this whole practical exam. Okay, Polly, I think I'm ready. All right, we will begin with today's daily workstation preparation. Ten minutes will be provided to prepare, to prepare your daily workstation. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly, start your preparation. Time begins now.
You have five minutes remaining. You may sit. This, uh, this evaluation is a, a basic manicure. Ten minutes will be provided to set up your workstation and prepare your client for a basic manicure. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your preparation. Timing begins now.
All right, you may sit down. Ten minutes will be provided to complete a basic manicure. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your basic manicure. Time begins now. You have five minutes remaining.
You may sit. We will now continue with a basic manicure. Five minutes will be provided to clean up your basic manicure workstation. I will announce when there are two minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your cleanup. Time begins now. You may sit. This evaluation is nail tip application. 10 minutes will be provided to set up your workstation and prepare your client for a nail tip application. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your preparation. Timing begins now.
You may be seated. Ten minutes will be provided to complete a nail tip application. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your nail tip application. Timing begins now. You may be seated. We will now continue with the nail tip application. Five minutes will be provided to clean up your nail tip application workstation. I will announce when there are two minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your cleanup. Timing begins now.
You may be seated. This evaluation is a nail enhancement using a form. 10 minutes will be provided to set up your workstation and prepare your client for a nail enhancement using a form. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your preparation, timing begins now. You may be seated. 20 minutes will be provided to complete a nail enhancement using a form. I will announce when there are 10 minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your nail enhancement using a form. Timing begins now.
You have 10 minutes remaining. You may be seated. We will now continue with the nail enhancement using a form. Five minutes will be provided to clean up your nail station enhancement using a form. 
I will announce when there are two minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your cleanup. Time begins now. You may be seated. This evaluation is end of the day cleanup. 10 minutes will be provided to clean up your workstation. I will announce when there are five minutes left to finish. When you complete your task, please stand quietly. Start your daily cleanup, timing begins now.
Congratulations, you have just completed your state board exam. Um, I did want to mention a uh, couple things that I did mention at the beginning. One was that gloves are not necessary for this exam. Um, I was informed by a PSI representative that they are not necessary. However, we use them in our exam because we use them in everyday life and it's not just to protect the client, but to protect ourselves. But one thing I would recommend is um, if you damage the glove to replace them um, and sanitize over the top of the glove. If you drop anything on the floor and you have to discard it, sanitize your gloves before you move on with the service. It is kind of difficult to swap the gloves, so don't do it unless you absolutely have to do it, and that would be like because of a puncture. Um, maybe don't wear really long nails when you go to take your exam. It's easier if your nails are a little bit shorter, you don't struggle as much. And I feel like there was one more thing. I don't, I think that's pretty much it. Um, but good luck.